so a uh, girl passed away this weekend uh, at the NPC European. I, I don't know her name. Wait, I at pol- the show? I apologize. I don't not know if it was. Yeah, it was. I do from what I hear, and forgive me, anybody listening. I'm not being disrespectful. Uh, I'm just trying to bring a little bit of light to it. So from what I heard, it was diuretic related. Yeah. Uh, if I'm wrong, I apologize. But the, the point I'm trying to get to is, and I don't know if this is where you were going, Ian, but Jake Wood put out a statement saying that he thinks the diuretic use is too much and he thinks, thinks the conditioning is too much and he thinks, uh, you know, I guess this girl was close to him and uh, people dying for this reason is not what our sport is about. And he wants to talk to the judges about possibly changing the way things are looked at on stage. And the reason I want to, the reason I'm glad you mentioned this, Ian, is I actually want to talk about this. Is there a way to change that? Because the whole no. premise of our sport is to look the best you can look as far as conditioning, as, as, as bone dry as you can be, and as big as you can be, and as all that. So how do we go to the judges and say, let's I, mark I think I think this won't get farther than this because I think any judge that is – deep enough into bodybuilding is going to know that diuretics don't make a bodybuilder, you know, and that, you know, that there is people. And I mean, prime example, I mean, like I know tons of guys like the Josh Wades or the Romans or me or guys like this, that can get skinless by working for it and not ever use diuretics. Exactly. I mean, you know, I, I'd be hard pressed to find many guys that were much harder and drier than I was this past weekend and I used almost zero diuretics for that. And same with Tampa the week before, you know, I could count how many tabs of total diazide I've used on one finger in the last five shows, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. one tab of diazide. If you add them all up together. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, I mean, so when the, there's these insane protocols and people are getting hurt with these things, I think that's, I think that's just bad protocols. I think that has nothing to do with conditioning, also- hurting people. I think people don't pay attention to like self-health. Like, I don't think a diuretic is going to kill you. I think you being unhealthy and taking diuretics could kill you. So I think a lot of people have to pay attention and get their blood panels done and go to doctors and get EKGs and echocardiograms and get scans and ultrasounds because we are in a sport sport that's unhealthy. And if you are at the, because the day of the show is the, is the unhealthiest day that all these things aside, sorry to interrupt, but all these things aside, we can all agree on these, disagree on this, protocols, drugs, whatever, blah, blah, blah. At the end of the day, absolutely impeccable conditioning is 100% achievable without crazy fucking yeah. leaps and bounds, whether Definitely. it's yeah. excessive amounts of drugs, excessive amounts of diuretics, you know, things like this. I mean, Doug Miller, prime example. I mean, like you can do these things, you know, look, yeah. we all know that being super, 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 super peeled might not be the best thing for you, but for how short of a duration it is, I don't think it's that bad. And I think that there's a million ways to do it very, very safely. Yeah. And I think when you take people and you take people in a depleted state and you introduce way too much diuretics with way too much drugs, and then you also have people rebounding out of shows, eating crazy amounts of food and spiking their blood pressure through the roof. And you have all these, this cocktail whirlwind then you're absolutely talking about a recipe for disaster. Do okay. I think penalizing conditioning is the right move to do? Zero percent. And I think that the judges will know that. And I don't, I'm not worried whatsoever that this will be a move that's done. I understand for Jake that this is extremely deset, upsetting and to lose another bodybuilder is, you know, is a travesty. I a hundred percent agree with that. I, I don't know the details in terms of what exactly happened to this this lady? What her protocols were? What her existing health ailments were? Okay. I don't know any of this. Well, that's no, the simple guess. answer is here. The simple answer here for everyone, no matter the level you're at, question everything. Yes, question everything. And if they there's can't give you an answer, that, they're not a coach. There's something you're unsure about, and that makes you feel even a hint, even if it doesn't make you feel uncomfortable because of your lack of knowledge. Question it, okay? Question it. Do your research. Do these things. And if you, there's something that you read and it makes you feel slightly uncomfortable and you question your coach on it and they don't give you an answer that makes you feel comfortable. Bye-bye. Oh. The end. That's it. Yeah. And this is where, look, you don't need I to have a hundred knowledge. You don't need to have any knowledge. You just need to be able to take ownership for your own health and take responsibility for these things and question the things that could be potentially harmful. And in this world, when you're talking about drugs, assume everything is harmful. 
everything you put into your body can be potentially harmful and question it. And if you don't feel comfortable with the answer you're given, don't do it. Don't do it. It's not worth doing something that could potentially be fatal to look 1% better on stage. I can Bill, absolutely fucking guarantee you that. Bill, he told me in 2013 when I was doing a show in North Carolina, I called him about a question I had. And he goes, if you have a potential of doing or taking something that can make you 2% better or 10% worse, it's not worth doing. Never, never do it. Never. And this is this is how I think I've really come into my own in terms of bodybuilding is by the less is more mentality. And, you know, it's, it's the don't do the, anything that can compromise, like you said, 1% better for the potential 10% worse. And when I eliminated all the variables that could potentially make me worse, all I ended up with was what I actually had earned and worked for. Positive which was result. Hard muscle and good conditioning that was there without any diuretics, without any funny tricks. And when you're left with that, it's very hard to fuck it up. You it, know? It, like, out, out of, I don't know about you guys, but out of all the or Roman, or out of all the protocols I've ever done, the one that seems to be the fucking one that like is literally the dumbest down simplest one is like you just follow your protocol the day before the show. You just need a little bit of dyes that you, you should just use a little sprinkle, maybe a quarter to a half if you need it. And that's it. It's like a little bit of dyes I do the day before the show. That's it. Like no. I see like that for all the protocols that I have done to me throughout the years. That's the one that I've used the you most. Know, and that's the one that seems to be the easiest and works the best. Do you know why that doesn't work? Most people can't decipher, especially I'm talking about more amateur on amateur level. Most people can't decipher between fat and water. Yes. So you'll get a guy who's like still got five pounds of fat to drop, but his coach or himself have told them it's just water. Don't worry. We'll get it off. Yeah. And then they end up taking a fucking Lasix and a fucking diazide. And the guy looks like complete shit on stage because now he's flattened out harder because he's flattened out and he's still fat. Yeah. <clears throat> so what I think a lot what of happened, people, it's what happened one, to me. One, one second. If, this is what I don't think people realize. And this is what Ian's been trying to say pretty much the entire podcast. When you're actually in shape, when you're, when you're finally like a hundred percent ready to get on stage, you won't need anything. There really isn't that much water. Like when I hear people, you know what I used to hear people say, I dropped eight pounds between the night and then the morning of the show. And I'm That's like, horrible that you fucking did something way wrong. Like answer, this is the question you should answer to yourself. If you don't think, that you could get on stage and be 100% confident with how you look without doing anything to it. How Whatever you're doing at one week out, one do week that out. and step on stage. That's right. If you don't think you could do that and be competitive, you're not in shape. That's how I know when I did Tampa last year, or sorry, uh, yeah, Tampa last year, or the New York, or the Olympia, or Tampa this year, or Texas, my look at one week out would have been 99.9% .9 just as competitive as the look I stepped on stage yeah, on. But I, yeah. but I will say this, and I've said this to my clients, you cannot be 100% peeled with zero diuretics. Yes, you I, can. I can agree you with need you at least, no, You need at least a sprinkle That's of not true. something to take that little bit of water that off. That is not because true. Every, I, 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 you might say that. I'm going to say that if somebody goes, you're saying diuretic, as a matter, I as would a probably fact. say if you used a quarter of a diazide, you probably would look better. That's not true because if you, I, if you manipulate, me. I'm if, telling you what I think. Okay. That's fine. I'm, so what I'm, I, what I'm saying to you, the truth is, is if you manipulate, manipulate minerals properly, you don't need yes. diuretics to be hundred percent ready on stage. And I've done it twice. With John, I, with I don't John. think you can reach your fullest potential without a little bit of diuretic. Those were my best looks in the two shows. Your best watched. looks. That doesn't mean it. That doesn't mean you couldn't have been better. Well, you could. I mean, that's a ridiculous statement. Anybody can. Be I better. don't think you can be as a bodybuilder. I don't think you can be your all-time hardest with zero diuretics. That is my what I, I'll okay. tell you. You're entitled to everybody. everybody. You're I entitled to your opinion, but and, I don't. And want... I get, and I barely take any. I'm like Ian. I take barely anything Guy, you're entitled that. to your opinion but i don't want to put that out in public because i don't think it's true for everybody no i'm just telling I, if, if anybody that knows me I've, i'll say it on your podcast or a million others i don't no, think no. You can. and that's fine that's fine that's your that's your opinion but i don't want people thinking out, out there thinking that they have to because they don't because i won like i beat michael lockett that's not fucking easy the guy's fucking peeled like i've won shows with zero diuretics but i okay know so I then there, I then there you go but I, but I know what I, I, but that doesn't mean that was my best look and I looked my best. Well, I, I don't know if I agree with that, but regardless, the point is the point I was trying to make before this is what Ian is saying is one week out, 
obviously there's probably maybe a lack of fullness. Maybe you need to carb load a little bit, but I'm one not, week, I'm talking about body fat. and yeah, condition. One week at one week out, you should be able to look and see all the fucking pretty much the same detail you're going to see on stage. If not a percent or two off. Yes. So these people that are taking like mass amount, you know, it's weird too. And I see people doing like diuretic, uh, Weeks diuretic out. diuretic plans that are fucking a week out or they're starting like aldactone for a week yeah i'm like why are you fucking doing that Dude, i'm high amounts of aldactone yeah. i've done aldactone three or four days out but like 12.5 i see guys are doing like 50 75 100 100 for five roman 10. roman you're peeled all the time do you fucking take any diuretics for a show take a little something like a half or a quarter diazide or something what i've done was uh a quarter a quarter quarter of lasix yeah that was when I was my, here's the difference. What guy said, he said, you cannot be your all time hardest. Yeah. But I think there's a difference between your all time hardest and your all time best. Look. 100%. Yeah. Okay. Yeah? That's a good distinction. Because yeah. I have looked super fucking shredded when I won my pro card, like to the point where people were saying, this is, this is actually disgusting. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> and then, yeah, but but I looked, I think I looked better, for example, at the last show that I did with Ian yeah. in mm-hmm. 2018, where I've taken no diuretics and I was a little fuller, but also a little softer. So that was my he, he that was, a prime example of this. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll, that was a better look, yeah, but I wasn't as hard as I was when I won my pro card. You know what? That's a good way to distinguish it. Okay, so I'll give this to you, Guy. You definitely, like he said, I think you get drier, but doesn't mean you're going to be better. I because, know. because like, what? so those two shows I did with, more than two, but the shows I did with John, we didn't use diuretics, and maybe I was a little more shredded when I worked with Chad, but my I was better when I work with John and we didn't use diuretics. But do you think if you actually found the correct balance between them both, it, it, you could have actually, I'm not, obviously you, you got it to a hundred percent for your physique to win, to win a show. But I'm saying, do you think if you actually found that perfect balance between being full and just the, the time, whatever diuretic you, like he said, he used Lasix. I never used it. So yeah. like, there's things that I haven't done that I'm like, maybe if I just use a little Lasix and never touch dyes, I mean, but I don't that's know. Also, that. That's also a, a cult, like that's a European thing. Yeah, that, exactly. That was what I, I was going to no, say. I know that. a lot of guys that use Lasix in the States and I just. But that's a country it. difference. I know over there, like, especially in Europe, using loop directs in, in small amounts is much, much, much more common. Even bikini girls like over here, that'll use a week's worth of aldactone over there will use like. 0.25 milligrams of Lasix. I know it's like. Do you think the girls use, since you said that, do you think girls are more prone to using diuretics for higher, longer periods of time because yeah. they don't have the, they have higher body fats to begin with and, and things can be looked at well, differently because, a lot because, easier with and, women than they can with men because with guys with yeah. water subcutaneous or in the muscle or glycogen loading, like, it's like Fouad said, you can, you can screw up being flat versus being fat very easy. With women, it's a lot harder because there's a lot more underneath the skin and they have a higher body fat percentage. Well, yeah, and I, I, think I think the women- risk, I think the risk of women taking that I've seen women take substantial amounts of diuretics compared That's, to a guy, I even bikini girls. I've seen bikini girls slam aldactona for high amounts for a week. Yeah. I, I yeah. see what you're saying. Also, guy. It makes sense because the girls right? don't have to be full in the muscle. So they can exactly. afford it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Because, and also because of women and just their natural hormonal balance, they're going to hold a little more body fat and like yep. and water in their, especially in their harder. extremities, you know, their hips, their glutes, their, their thighs. You know, and I think a lot of them think that if they just hammer diuretics, it'll it'll enhance that look. Like, have you ever guys said, "Oh, the bikini chick, oh, she looks kind of flat." Yeah, and they pound that, they make a ton of that. Like, you know. Um, okay, so turning from that, I hope I I hope if anything came from that conversation, people listening just realize they're taking if they take a lot of diuretics, they realize that they don't have to take yes nearly the amount they're taking. That's I mean, that's basically- this is an example too. I mean. Like even when I was here in Texas and I was talking to all the other guys, I talked to Martin, you know, I talked to Phil Lahard. I talked to these guys, these guys that are achieving laser fucking sharp conditioning. They're peeled weeks out. Generally taking little to almost no diuretics. And that's because they're the guys that are willing to actually work for the conditioning and realize that it's generally making their physiques worse and not better. And one more, one more point. Like on what I thought the same thing. We are like I took one eighth of a dot. Like I nibbled a corner off a thirty-seven twenty-five. But what I'm saying is, we're all saying the same thing. Fuad saying you don't need any. 
And all three of us are saying you might just need a little. So it's, touch, it's, it's yeah, either yeah. zero to a very little bit. Can so I that's make, a general consensus. Can I make one more point just for newer guys that might be competing? <laughs> the reason, the, 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 the one of the biggest reasons, it's not because we're all so fucking health conscious that we're like, oh, don't take diuretics, just take a core. I mean, if it worked, we would take five. The reason is, <laughs> the, I, I'm just being honest. The reason, right. the reason is, is because it's too risky. It's less risky to get, peeled in shape ahead of time, like a week out, two weeks out. And then also, from because if you time. take, because if you're taking like a, a full diazide or something, even if you're shredded, let's say you're shredded, you take a full diazide, it could do way more to your body than taking that eighth or that quarter. So yeah. we want, we want to take as little, little diuretic as possible so we can gauge and measure exactly what's going to happen to our body the well, next is, day, the next day when we step on stage. This so, is what I said. It's, it's how I've, really nailed my look is eliminating possible variables. That's you know, what I'm trying to start introducing things that are unpredictable, like lots of diuretics, the potential for your physique to get worse is, is generally more percentage than it is for it to get better. You can, the re- you but the reason, the, the reason I brought that up though, is I just, cause I know there's going to be people, people out there that are saying, Oh, they're just lying because they don't want to say bad things. No, no. I'm telling, I'm telling you guys, if it fucking worked, we would take more. The reason Ready? we don't, uh, this is the reason we don't take I more is because we're trying to be safe, safer about, measuring how we're going to land on stage yeah so but what you said what ian said this is one thing that i learned once you put it in you can't take it out oh yeah. man so if you put yeah. it in little amounts you're or, on the or, train or, or once you're on. you can gauge it but if you take a half or a whole diazide and things start to go down a rabbit hole you can't f- take the diazide out because once you swallowed it so i tell people start with a little and just if you need to you might just need an eighth and that's it yep Anybody well, who did, take any- a half because the general consensus, everybody takes a half a dime. And, and this it's is stupid. all, this is all very manageable by just being in shape. Yeah. Just get yeah. in shape. Just anybody- get so lean that your glutes are fucking stride and your hamstrings are cut up to your glutes and that everything is detailed without anything. If you can't post a fucking a progress shot from the back two weeks out with peeled glutes and feel good about it, then there's something not right. Yes. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Please subscribe, share with your friends, and like the video. And if you get a chance, check out the description for all the different links to all the different places you can find Hostile and myself. And lastly, check out Hostile.com for our new line of supplements and all of our apparel and gear. Thanks again for watching.